Welcome to City Service Committee. If you have a problem hearing me, I'm getting a cold. I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge, Chair, and I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, Vice Chair. Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan and Ward 7 City Councilor Rachel Mior. This meeting is being held audio and video recorded. Laura, will you call the roll? Sure. Councillor Foster? Here. Councillor Mayori? Here. Councillor Labarge? Here. And Councillor Qu uh, Quinlan? Here. Public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the committee on any subject? Being no members of the public present, there is no public comment. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of December 7th, 2020. No action is needed for the minutes of December 7th, 2020. They are not ready for acceptance. Number five, the next item is referred to the committee. 20.162, appointments to various committees referred by city council on January 7th, 2021. Arts Council, get my paper. We have Jesse, I think it's Hasinger, 184 Main Street, apartment four Northampton, term January, 2021 through June, 2024 to fill a vacancy. Um, we have Councillor Quinlan, can you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, Jesse Hasinger? I can. Thank you very much, Councillor Labarge. Uh, I had a fine conversation with Jesse. Um, you know, uh, when I saw his uh, application, I thought there's a boy, there's a lot of uh, really good things there uh, that make him more than qualified for the Arts Council. Um, I had, uh, so I so I had a pretty lengthy conversation. Uh, Jesse's lived here for a little over four years. Uh, and we talked a lot about his experience. Specifically, I was curious about his time at the Coolidge Corner Theater, uh, which he mentioned is a nonprofit art house, very similar to the Amherst Cinema. Uh, it has four theaters in it. They show films all the time, uh, but they also do have live events there, author events where they partner with local bookstores. Uh, and they have a number of done a number of things with, um, you know, where they, they've shown a specific film and then brought in subject matter experts and so forth. And he mentioned one specifically was do the right thing was where they brought in a discussion. Uh, they brought in experts to talk about uh, historical, uh, you know, ideas around uh, racial tension, but also uh, experts to talk about the current climate as well. So uh, he was pretty proud of that one uh, also. Uh, he coordinated events there, but he was also, um, you know, there was a group there that made decisions together. It sounds like Jesse coordinated most of the events, but there was a, a democratic sort of, uh, you know, opinion there. So they could all kind of, you know, everybody had a, a right to say what they thought the the, the theater should be working on. Um, so I, I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, Jesse told me a couple of other things. Um, I asked if he had been following the Northampton Arts Council very closely. Uh, he mentioned not very closely. Um, however, um, Mr. Foote from the Art Council sometimes has lunch in Belly of the Beast where Jesse's uh, an owner uh, and worker there. So he said they've gotten to know each other a little bit and uh, he was invited to participate or observe, I guess, the December meeting of the Arts Council. Uh, he's also mentioned that Belly of the Beast has been very happy to hang posters to advertise uh, arts, uh, arts Council events and has even donated food sometimes to some of their events. So uh, it is something that they, that they have um, committed to. And I wanted to just talk a little bit about commitment because as I think all of the counselors and, and Laura, I think we all know, Jesse's spoken at city council meetings. Uh, he's spoken at Northampton Police and Review Commission meetings. Last month, they had Ace Taylor, who also has spoken at meetings. Um, and I think there's a lot of people everywhere. This is not just, you know, you know, unique to Northampton by any stretch, but we all know that there are a lot of people. We know when we go to the grocery store, when we sadly read the comments on Facebook, when we uh, do anything, we know that there are plenty of people that have something to say. Uh, so I'm glad to see people that that speak at these meetings with something to say, trying to get involved. It, not everybody wants to lend their strength to carry the the load. So I was, you know, this, the fact that this was two months in a row for me with someone that had spoken at meetings, I made me feel like 
at least this person wants to do something, right? They want to be a part of the, the city. Um, so I, I felt felt good about that. I would mention also Jesse had one funny anecdote that he was born in Syracuse, New York, and he said recently he was on the phone with his mom and told his mom that he had applied to be on the Arts Council of Northampton. And she said, do you remember when you were little and I was on the Arts Council in Syracuse? Uh, so he's like a second generation Arts Council uh, member if we approve his application here. Um, I asked, this is a question that I've asked people when they're a new member, a new appointee to a committee is, was there, is there some sort of idea that you have that this committee or council is not doing that you think would be interesting? And Jesse thinks um, that it would be really fun to kind of coordinate city reads, you know, a book read. And I, and I thought about when my, when my children were at JFK, the whole school read a book. Um, and then they all talked about it. And obviously sixth graders and eighth graders view things differently. So the discussion in the whole school was, was different, you know, so, but it's interesting that everybody is getting this. And he kind of felt like this was something that if a lot of people in town that want to participate and read a book that, you know, especially uh, once we get out of this kind of state of uh, emergency that we're in now, you could have a, a, a large event with author or other subject matter ex experts and have, you know, kind of good community spirit and create an education and a dialogue for everyone. I thought that was kind of interesting. He mentioned uh, specifically, he thought it would be neat to read a book, um, considering the discussion in Northampton that's been so strong about defunding the police uh, and kind of the, using the money for, for other things, uh, that it would be neat to do something like that. But he didn't think it always had to be that heavy of a, uh, of a topic either. He felt that the city could get something out of that. I know that uh, I mentioned that to my wife because I thought it was a pretty smart idea. And she mentioned to me that she knew that Forbes already does that in some sense. So I, I wondered if that wouldn't be something neat to see the Arts Council and Forbes cooperate on. Uh, in the future. So with all of that said, it was a fine discussion. And, and again, I, I was pleased that, that Jesse in, has spoken to us in council and now wants to be uh, part of a municipal committee. So uh, I would move a positive recommendation for Jesse Hassinger to the Arts Council. We need a second. A second. Off my game today. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Jesse Hasinger to the Arts Council with a positive recommendation to full City Council. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Quinlan. That was an excellent, excellent um, recommendation. And it sounds like he's very, very motivated. I think so. Okay, next. <coughs> Housing partnership. We have Sarah Howard, 8 High Street, Florence, term January 2021 through June 2024 to fill a vacancy. I will give my report on my conversation with my applicant, Sarah Howard. I had a, a nice talk with Sarah on the telephone and um, I heard a lot about her history of her life. And I just wanna reach, she did email me cause I requested that she do that for me too. Um, it's amazing um, how Sarah came out and talked about her life. My reasons for wishing to be a member of the housing partnership spring from a few different sources. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Fair and affordable housing is an issue that is near and dear to my heart. I have always felt that every person deserves as a basic right of being alive on our shared planet, a place where they are allowed to exit. It feels vitally important to my sense of justice and humanity to join in the effort to support, defend, and carve out those spaces for people in our community. As a single mother, I raised my two children living below the poverty level. I was able to manage and meet my family's needs through my resourcefulness, as well as through the immeasurably helpful resource of living in subsidized housing at that time. I was living in Amherst. 
I was able to put myself through nursing school and last year became a registered nurse. I am fully cognizant of the luck and also the privilege I had to be able to navigate the convoluted, overwhelming and discouraging system enough to get on a housing list, remain on that list and preserve over the course of years until I was able to obtain affordable housing for my family. It breaks my heart to know that there are only limited units available for the many families and individuals who need that same resource and could benefit as, as much. I am now working and living within the city of High, High View of Northampton in our short-term subacute rehab unit. We have a specific population of people who are either current or recovering people with substance use diagnosis. The issue of houselessness remains in the forefront of my mind as I see clearly how paramount housing is to the ability of my patients to access and benefit from health care. I believe I will bring to the partnership the perspective of knowing what it is like to navigate the system. I understand inherently and our participants and harshness of the system and its downfalls. I know from firsthand experience how frustrating it is and what it means for one survival to be able to navigate. Having lived below the poverty level for so long, I have plenty of contacts and friends who are experienced houselessness or near houselessness. In the past, I have had more than one friend stay with me back when I lived in my tiny subsidized apartment, crashing on my couch when they were experiencing houselessness themselves. I also bring the perspective of a nurse working in the field of addiction treatment and having worked in case management. I know what people who use services are asking for, both from my own experience and as a professional in the field. I believe that these dual experience give me a perspective that will be useful to the housing partnership. My firsthand lived experiences as well as seeing the daily suffering and struggle faced by my current patients have infused me with a passion and a desire to fight for meeting the needs of everyone in our community. Some areas I would love to see the partnership move forward are continuing to explore the most effective ways to increase the affordable housing stock. Whether it's through looking at further zoning changes including allowing a tiny homes in Northampton. And in parentheses, she states, after all, there is no limit how large a single, single family house is allowed to be, but there is a limit to how small it can be. I think this is inherently wrong and finding ways to encourage infill will inclusionary housing set aside requirements. I am interested in putting in work toward progressive change. Thanks so much for your work and for your time in considering the matter. I look forward to hearing your decision in regards to my appointment to the, to the partnership. Best regards, Sarah Howard. She was really amazing to talk to you and it hits you right in the heart. And um, a lot of the stuff is, it is so true. I've had a family member that went through almost the same situation as Sarah. So, Anyways, I moved for the recommendation of Sarah Howard to housing partnership with a positive recommendation to full city council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Rachel? Just to say um, from Sarah uh, Howard's email, just how it always brings back that point about how powerful personal narrative and personal experiences are. I really appreciate that she shared that. And I also really like um, the kind of specific goals and, and specific areas she um, wants to work on and wants to see happen. So I think that's always a great thing and a, a point D. Thank you. 
I, you know, the name was so familiar <laughs> that, I, <laughs> that I asked her. She said, yes. I said, okie dokie. <laughs> All right. So, so we just had a discussion. Is anybody else would like to speak? Any counselor? Okay. If not, roll call, Laura. Uh, Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have Human Rights Commission, Kathy Wicks. <coughs> 102 Black Birch Trail, Florence, term January 2021 through June 2024 to fill a vacancy. Rachel Mior, Councillor, can you give us your report? Um, yeah, so I had an um, exciting conversation with Kathy because admittedly it's all the things that, you know, it's, it's a lot of what was in my background personally and what I get excited about. Her background in public health, her anti-racism work and linking public health to anti-racism work and her desire to be on the Human Rights Commission. So I'm very, I'm particularly excited about this um, appointment because uh, she also shared elements that you were just sharing about Sarah Howard, very kind of specific things that she wants to offer, very doable. Um, I, I really like that uh, when, when an appointee can bring um, some part of the agenda with them that for uh, the commission to work on. Uh, she also um, she also has worked in Springfield. Let them just kind of read the, she was on the race and equity, uh, the race and health equity board, um, uh, the subcommittee of the Western M uh, Mass Public Health Institute um, and she has a, a real uh, strong facilitation background and talked about different models of um, e equity and representation and that she worked on in Springfield and would like to um, bring to bear here. Uh, so, and the Western Mass Public Health um, um, Equity uh, Network is just, is just amazing. They're, they're actually known nationally I'm really proud of that, that, that they're from Western Mass. It's a, um, so anyway, I think that she, especially in the light of last year when in, in our resolution bringing, making, you know, declaring racism a public health crisis that uh, I, f I feel like this is a really timely appointment. And I, I you know, I, I wholeheartedly recommend Kathy Wicks for the Human Rights Commission. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. To forward the appointment of Kathy Wicks to the Human Rights Commission with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. All right, Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commission. Joe Ella Tarbutton, 81 Con Street, apartment 626 Northampton, term January 2021 through June 2022. And Councilor Foster, can you give us an, uh, your report on your conversation with applicant Joella Tarbutton? I can, I spoke with um, Joella yesterday and um, honestly, I, I wish that I'd had a significantly longer amount of time to talk to her than I did. Uh, we had a great conversation. Um, she wanted uh, um, to recognize that she knows Councillor Maiori from UMass, though she had a different last name at the time. Her last name was Costello. Um, so Joella Costello <laughs> She's back in is who area? we're talking about. She is back in this area. She's living... Um, on Con Street and wants to join oh the Northampton goodness. Housing Authority. Yeah. Wow, I have got to connect with her. I was wow. trying to figure that out, Councillor Foster, on the apartment number, 626. Oh, so cool. Is that, is that Walter Salvo's or is that the... Uh, okay, I thought... I so. believe it's Salvo. She's been on the um, board at the Salvo house, so I believe wow. it's Salvo, though I didn't confirm. Yep, so she's back in town. Um, she, and what, it, we just had a, a really great conversation um, because she is from the South. And um, so she'd been doing some advocacy work in Georgia, uh, you know, around the most Senate runoff race in Georgia. And, you know, I asked her how kind of how she 
was doing and viewing joining authority in light of everything that's happening right now, right? And so we had this great discussion about local action and the power of local action. And she said she was inspired um, to apply to join the Northampton Housing Authority, um, partly when she saw how responsive our government here in Northampton is. She's had great good experiences with the mayor's office, with the housing authority, listening um, to tenants' concerns and taking them seriously and getting back to them. And um, you know, she's she's excited for the opportunity to be a part of that. And she said that um, when there was an opening, uh, four or five other tenants called her and were like, "You better be the one to join." Um, you know, so she she is applying by request and um, and very excited about doing it. Um, you know, one one thing I asked her, sort of talked about uh, as well, similar to Councillor Quinlan's question, um, what she might want to change or what she might want to promote more um, in the work. And she's, you know, pre-pandemic, pretty regularly would take people to meetings that they needed to go to, um, AA meetings, you know, healthcare appointments, that that's something she's kind of always done and has always really appreciated the opportunity uh, to help others. And then she said the most interesting um, and insightful thing. And, and she was like, you know, we've got right here, the Smith College for Social Work. Um, and what if they had an office in, um, you know, in one of our housing properties and maybe rotated students through for an internship or for an opportunity to help? You know, she's like, so many people living here are struggling with issues of addiction and mental health. Um, you know, that maybe there's an opportunity for a partnership there. Um, and so I just, I, I, I thought that was a really wise idea. And I said, let me know if I can help. Um, uh, so I think her compassion and her energy, um, and she's already doing work to advocate for and connect tenants. Um, and so I, I think her voice would be a really important one um, on the Housing Authority. So I move to make a positive recommendation for Joella Tarbun. Second. Did we get a second on that? Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear it. Okay, so is there any discussion? Um, just to say that Joella was a leader and a, you know, fierce advocate like 18. So I'm, I'm sure it's only gotten better with age. I know she sounds very motivated. <laughs> right. And when you said her, her name, I thought, oh, you know, I, the only other Joelle I ever knew was Joe Castello. And then it turned out to be her. So it's just, that's really, that really tickles me. Now you'll be able to meet her again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've had our discussion. Um, how about we do a roll call, Laura? Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. I think we're heading for number six on new business. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to discuss with you, councillors. Who would you like to have come in in February for the month of February? And I think it's what, February 1st, Karen, our next meeting? Let me check. Yeah, February 1st. That looks right. And I know we just heard Laura talking a little while back. We had um, Anne Marie Mojo scheduled. And for some reason, there was some miscommunication going on. So that did not happen. And I know, I don't know if you would like to have her come for the month of February. I think one of you counselors also mentioned um, the senior center with Marie Westberg. So what would, what would you like? That's up to you. Councilor Muir. Right, the senior center was a great one. I just, uh, it, it, this idea doesn't have to be the next one, just down the pipe. Um, how about uh, Keith Benoit? Am I pronouncing his name? Mm, yes. Uh, because I was going to actually just, I also wanted to thank you, Chair Labarge, for your advocacy, because I remember sitting in, sitting with Wayne, it seemed like years ago, but it, could, it had to be last year, when you were really, um, you know, advocating for those with um, hearing disabilities, 
and talking about bringing a listening system. And now we have this grant, I think it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. It seemed like I didn't know if it would ever happen and now it's here. So I, I wanted to thank you very much for, for your strong advocacy for those with disabilities. And you. if you think it's appropriate, I would, uh, would really like to hear from him at would some point, like but it doesn't have to be next. You would like to have Kim Benoit come in? Who did you yeah, say? You it could be, you know, whenever the timing is right. And I, I can't hear her. Ken no. Benoit? Keith Sorry. Benoit. Keith yeah. Benoit. Okay. Keith Benoit. I hope I'm saying Benoit. Is that correct? You know, Laura Benoit? Yes, I've heard him say it himself. I want to go Benoit, Benoit. Benoit. make it's it friends. Keith. No. <laughs> well, that's, that's an opportunity that we could have for February, too, if he's available. Yeah. But I also, the senior center was a great idea. I'd forgotten about that one. That would be right. So whatever I think, you all think. Counselor Quinlan, didn't you mention the senior center? One of the counselors did. I, I right. did mention the senior center because again, similar to the, to the rec department, the, you know, the budget is in place with, and, and I know at the senior center, there was severe cuts made to the budget around layoffs uh, and so forth, but they're still providing services. And I thought we could get an update on those, but I, I got to be honest with you. I still think we should be trying to talk to Anne Marie uh, because here's where I'm at. The Parks and Recreation Commission, which is an advisory board to her, has not had a meeting since March of 2020. Uh, I saw that. I, I know that they, they did some things oh. with uh, holiday lights and, and some other things, but I think Anne Marie should be coming in. We should find out why they haven't had a meeting, number one. And number two, what else, what else is the city's money being spent on uh, in light of the fact that we can't, can't have so much right now in this, in this uh, current crisis. I know. I thank you for that, Councillor. Timely. I, I know. I did check out the boards and stuff to see how many meetings they've had, and he's right about that. So, Laura, could you, would you agree, Councillors, that we attempt to get, again, Anne-Marie Mojo to come in for the month of February, and then we can look at Keith Benoit to come in in March? Yeah, I'm sorry. Because we don't know how many appointments we're going to be having. Mm. And if we could fit two interviews in, that would be great, you know, talking with department heads. But I think with Anne-Marie Mosier, we have some talking to do with her about what is in plan here for the community in that. Because there's no communication. If I, if I could just uh, interject one thing, which is our next council meeting uh, is this is a week from today. Um, would that, uh, Laura, do you think that after the 21st is enough time to invite two if we don't have any appointments to go over? Yeah, I think Keith would be pretty quick too if he's just gonna be describing maybe the new, um, I don't know what to call it, what was it called again? That's the communication, the uh, access, yeah. uh, the system. Uh, that's, a, that's a biggie. That might be kind of like what you're most interested in hearing about from him. So he, he might be a shorter, I was thinking it. Well, you know what? I I think we should have Anne Marie Mojo come in. That's my thoughts. Have her speak for about what, 20 minutes? That should 30. be adequate enough, shouldn't it? <laughs> uh -huh. And then have Keith come in. We could have Keith come in in February and have him speak about the new grant that we got, which is marvelous. And um, Councillor Foster. I just wanted to interject. Um, I would love to hear Keith speak about the new grant, but in addition, um, as the city transitioned from the ADA coordinator being the drug center to Keith's position, I would actually like to have him talk more than just about the grant and the hearing system and council chambers. I that. think that's amazing, um, but I definitely, uh, have I think a bigger view that I would love to hear more about. I agree with that because the CDBG grants are coming and he's organizing that. And then we'll be interviewing on the CDBG applicants coming in. I agree with that. So what do we, okay, let's get, see if we can get Anne Marie Mojo to come in and also see if we can get Keith to come in. And I would say, what, like 20 minutes on Keith? And I don't know, how long do you think it would be for Anne-Marie Mosier? Because if we yeah, have appointments, we're pretty good at 
you know, doing our interviewing and moving it along. So I think we could fit two of them. And I'm going to let you kind of like designate time for each um, department head we're bringing in. I, I would agree with that, Councilor Labarge. So you want to go, what, 20 and 30 and 30 and 30? <laughs> An hour and a half for our meeting. Uh, I don't, Ooh, think, I don't yeah. think that's going to work, Laura, because we have, I think, our um, going over our ordinances and stuff. Don't we? You don't have to assign them a specific time. You could just right. put them in an order on the agenda with you know the understanding however long it takes if there's more questions, like a little longer. Yeah, at 5.30 yeah. we start with that. Um, it, um, and then we could know for ourselves that we have a, you know, we're thinking point each person. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only question I have, Councillor Lobarge, is um, I had spoken with Councillor Nash, who had talked with Councillor Shara, so we're getting into a little bit of telephone here about the potential for a joint city services uh, community resources meeting um, to discuss homelessness in Northampton. And I just didn't know where the status of that was, if that was something that was moving forward. But um, the idea was to bring in both the mayor's office as well as community resources to address it. I talked with Councillor Nash, because Laura, I, I had talked with her just recently on that. And Jim and I had a lengthy talk on the phone. This was probably about two weeks ago, Laura, or so, that we were starting to try to organize this. And then I had not heard anything. So I called Jim this week and talked with him because I need to know myself because we were looking at January 27th on a Wednesday, right, Laura? Yeah. And at 5 o'clock p.m., he did give me that time. And him and I went through a list of people of having, which I think was Jay Shashetti from ServiceNet, Pamela Schwartz. There's a list of people that him and I worked on. Jim said that he needed to get some more information. So Laura, do you have an update on that? Because we all really need to know if we're having it or not. I just know last I heard when I spoke to him this week, he was a little thrown after um, the council referred to community resources, the affordable housing <laughs> provision. And he wanted to talk to Carolyn, I think about when that needed to go on community resources. So he was gonna get back to me. He was still looking at Wednesday the 27th, but wanted to talk to Carolyn about when they needed to do a public forum on affordable housing because he didn't want to combine the two meetings. So he hasn't quite gotten back to me definitively but he was still looking at the Wednesday he was he was realizing that time was running short to pull something together for the Wednesday too so I'll have to check back in with him I haven't heard since I spoke to him a couple days ago okay what, <laughs> what I'd like to know from the counselors right now does it look good just in case it is going to happen to have that joint meeting on January 27th at five o'clock. So we're all set with that, Laura. Okay. If he decides, you can let him know we're all set okay. with that. Thank you, Councillor Foster, for bringing that up because, like I said, I talked with him this week and very concerned about the time limit here. I could even try to call him after this meeting and see if he's, you know, made a definitive decision and email you guys. Okay. We definitely, we'll have to start inviting people. All right, so we need a final vote. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, roll call, Laura. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Uh, yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Thank you.